Well there, so here we are with yet another um, very, very nice train pack. Uh, this one is one I got not too recently, but I wasn't able to take a look at on the channel because, once again, I've been living in the States, living in the United States, and haven't had a chance to come back and film many reviews, especially of things that I left behind. So, as you can see, it's the Flying Scotsman train pack, but instead of actually the Flying Scotsman locomotive, it's got a, a, another blue A4. That's mainly the reason I got it, because um, you, you may well know that I have another Blue A4, which is the 70th anniversary Mallard. That one's a bit valuable. The reason I got this is because I wanted to take it back to the States with me um, at some point, and I didn't really want to take something as, as extra valuable as the Mallard. Uh, so I'd rather take one like this, which is, you know, easily, you can put it away into a, into a suit suitcase or a, um, a little box or something keep it nice. So let's take a look at it. So yes, here's what came in the set. Um, you get the A4 called Kingfisher, which is number 4483. Um, really, really nice. Um, I think I, I just love these ones. This one has a single funnel, and if you look closely, a little window with a corridor tender. And it also has that you can see the little corridor going right by the, the coal, which is quite a nice little touch. Um, once again, all the usual stuff in terms of detail on, on the A4. I think these are the best A4s on the market. I mean, just look at it. The color is fantastic, the finish is fantastic, the shape is the most accurate I've seen. I think it's way better than Bachmann. Not that the Bachmann one isn't nice, but this one I think is just so good, especially con considering how relatively affordable they are. Um, and you get three of these, this is probably the one of the most attractive parts about the set, you get three of these very attractive, newly retooled LNER Teak coaches. You get a first class one, the buffet car, which is amazing, we'll take a look at that in a moment, and a composite brake, uh, which has differently coloured interiors, so you've got red seats in there and blue seats in there, isn't that amazing? and all the right detail on the end as well. So let's take a closer look. Even, I mean, well, an even closer look. See how smoothly it runs. I absolutely love the piston action there, especially the way it goes underneath the valance. I think there's something so attractive about that. It's an extremely good runner. Just head it up backwards. As usual, sprung buffers, separately applied grab irons and details. All of the linkages work very, very nicely. And um, the usual cab interior business. The little, it does actually come with a little um, Flying Scotsman head uh, destination plate thing, which I haven't got on at the moment, but I will show you at a later date. Cab interior has been done, the lettering is extremely good, and amongst other things, um, I just really like the way the whistle and all of that front stuff is done. Kingfisher is not one of the most famous ones, but I, I like the idea of having one that isn't one of the most famous ones running around. It's nice to have a sort of just a regular A4 around, and also I quite like Kingfishers, I quite like the bird. Now, one, th one thing I really like about these, um, these models is that they have the little number on the front, and it says Class A4 right there. But I just really like the way the, the lettering is so well embossed, even on something as small scale as that. Ooh, we just went into the no-focus area. There we go, that's much better. Similarly, just look at the crispness of the lettering just, just underneath the cab window right here. You can see, actually, if you take a look at the real... Uh, mallard at the NRM, you will see those little strokes just just on the 8 and the 3 and the 4s there. You see how there's little, uh, they look like sort of speaker little, little lines um, just, just there in the middle of the 8s. 
and so on. Those are actually there, but I think it's amazing they've actually picked that out, especially the way the, the white line sort of crisply outlines it. And manufacturing has come on so much, even just during my lifetime. I'm amazed at what they're able to do these days. And even to say, to have a little plate like that that clear, quite clearly says, if you've got it in focus, um, quite clearly says Doncaster 1936. That's the same deal with the LNER at the back here, on the tender, that they're very nicely picked out too. This is the back of the tender, which shows all kinds of interesting little knobs and turning things. Uh, I'm pretty sure these have something to do with water, uh, getting the water out of the tank in the tender and into the engine, and exactly how much you use up at the one time. Then obviously that's where the coal comes from, that big uh, little opening there. Uh, our our corridor leads in that way, so that's how you get to the back, and that's how you can change crews in between um, in between stations. You don't need to stop necessarily. You can you can just uh, change crews without stopping on a long trip, say from London all the way to Edinburgh. Now, once again, they've done a terrific job in the interior of that cab. Now, now that I've got an HD camera, this ca oops, this camera can actually do it justice. So just take a look at all of that. Just gawp at how good that is. Now of course when it's going at high speed those needles don't move. It's worth pointing that out, but would you want them to? That would probably raise the price to about you know, £400,000 or something ridiculous. So there we go, there's the um, the control, that's the throttle I think, the, the little red piece there. We've got seats, uh, the driver bucket seats, um, and those little pipes and there's the firebox. I think that's the reverse of the little silver thing there, or maybe that's the throttle. I don't know, I don't know my way around a steam engine. Um, but yes, that is absolutely superior um, detail on this one. I think it's absolutely terrific. So, on to the coaches. Just had to take one more look at it all uh, hooked up like that. I think it's one of the most, the most beautiful streamlined train designs, and hence why I bought one. So here we are, here's the coaches that come with the set. Now Hornby have been doing some absolutely excellent work with these, um, particularly the way actually this finish, this it looks like wood doesn't it? But it's actually a fake finish produced by basically many many little dots sprayed in an extremely precise pattern, but to, to, to the naked eye, to, you know, to any one of us, it just looks like a very very nicely varnished wood finish. And this is probably one of the most astonishing things I've seen in any manufactured model train ever. This is, I can't, I can barely even believe how good that looks. I mean, right there, you can even see the little knots in, in the door. That's what looks like knots. And then there's the grain going along the side there. Now, when we get in this close, you can begin to see how it's quite sort of uh, granular, the texture that they've managed to create but I still think it's really damn impressive that they've managed to do that on something as small as a little double O coach. And as you see from this, from this angle, it just looks great. And you don't even really sense that there's any sort of wizardry going on, it just looks like wood. Uh, now the lettering, there's your number one for the first class. There's your windows uh, looking into the first class compartments. There's something romantic about compartment coaches. I wish they were still um, they were still running. As nice as sort of open carriages are, I, I do quite like the compartments. There's a Flying Scotsman nameplate. Those are only applied to coaches in the set, so if you wanted to get extra coaches for this you'd probably have to apply that sign yourself. So there's the first class car. Moving on to the buffet car. Now this one believe it or not, is even more impressive than the first class car because not only does it have little moulded tables and chairs, it has open windows for ventilation, little no smoking signs in the window, let's have a look at one of them. Smoking weird, yep, focus. I have to learn how to focus this, this camera because I'm really terrible. Can we come back into focus please? I guess not. Well, you saw for a split second there that it said smoking prohibited and trust me it does. Uh, can we get at it? There we go. Smoking prohibited. Clearly readable. Even on something as small as that. 
absolutely astonishing. So yeah, we've got little molded tables and chairs in there. The lettering for buffet car is just, that looks amazing. It almost looks like it's embossed. Looks almost looks like it's standing out from the surface of the from the surface of the car, but it actually isn't. Of course, it's just painted on. I'm not exactly sure how they do this. I think it's it's absolute wizardry. But yes, let me show you the other bit on on the other side of the car. So this is the other side of that buffet car. So let's just zoom in right here. Well, not zoom. Let's just get close up and look at the bar on this. Now that looks like somewhere you'd want to order a drink. Ah, irony, now I can't focus on the interior. There we go, look at that. It's actually got a little railing placed around it. And then in the back there is what looks like some sort of, uh, oop, some sort of tank or a, you know, there, there are a pair of little tanks on the bar which may be sort of for beer or, or, or something like that. But look at that. There may be beer taps, I don't, I'm not sure. But I think that is absolutely brilliant, and I love it. So, one last look at the composite brake car. While we're at it, it's worth having a look at the detail on the ends right here. You can see that we've got sprung buffers even on the passenger cars. I think that's really quite something. Uh, the diaphragm, this looks like what's a diaf uh, what would be known as a diaphragm. They've got little pipes going up and down, separately applied. The roof detail is great, as you can see. And then in the case of this one, we've got quite a few little grab irons and, and, and handles that have been separately applied, and it's differently painted interiors. So you've got the little red ones in there and the blue ones in there. I think that means because you've got a little first class compartment in there, which is blue colored, and a third class compartment, which is red colored. Now they both look equally nice to me, even though they're different ticket prices. But here's the end of the train. Now the other one's available in this in this kind of line up. I think they've done. Here's the slam doors on the other side. These lead directly into the compartments. So it's an even better look in. Oh yes, and there's a smoking compartment. You're allowed to smoke in that one. Um, you've got the guards bit at the back here. That's where he sort of works. And look at that. There's actually a little. I didn't even notice that before. There's actually a little wheel in there. Uh, you can, I guess he uses to, God, I have to get inside this thing and work out what else is in there. Um, that is absolutely amazing. Anyway, the other ones, the other cars that are available in this, uh, in this style from Hornby, I think there is, um, there are first, other first class cars, uh, a dining, uh, yeah, we've got the dining car, we've, and you can also get sleeping cars and full brake cars. So I might consider getting one or two of those. Oh, just look at how the light's coming through that car now. The composite brake. Oh, just look at that. Let's get through there as well. That's just fantastic, isn't it? It looks real. It's not you... <laughs> I'm just amazed at how good these models are. And it wasn't that too expensive either. As I remember, this this whole set, including the locomotives and these brand these brand new retooled cars, came came to about 118 pounds. Which, if you think about it, that's worth that much on its own. And these are usually worth about 40 to 50 each. So I think that's pretty good. If you, value for money, if you can try and find one. Let's finish with just a little look into that car. I'd absolutely love to spend an afternoon riding in one of these. So thanks for watching, and see you next time.